Hey, what's up everybody out there? This is Nick from House of Paint. Just want to give a uh, big shout out to Credit UK, uh, Dominic Marriott, for um, letting me put these, what are almost guaranteed to be terrible and uninformative videos up on his beloved page. Um, but in all seriousness, uh, I just want to talk a little bit about the three main steps of miniature painting. Um, those being base coating, washing, dry brushing. So tonight I'm going over something uh, relatively simple, kind of a simple paint. I'm going over the stone golem. And um, I'm going to try to make this a series. I actually picked up, let me see if I can get a little closer here. I actually picked up um, three of the four golems or golems. I say golem. I have the stone golem, I have the clay golem, and I have the iron golem, which I'm a little excited about. I'm pretty excited about the iron golem. Um, I did not find the flesh golem at my local uh, gaming store, but that's okay. I'm gonna go with the f with the stone golem for this tutorial because he's made of stone, not a whole lot of bells and whistles to him. We're really going with a, a simple color scheme here um, and we're gonna base coat him. I chose this guy because I'm only base coating him uh, in one color and that is going to be um, Dungeon Stone. Uh, this happened to come in the Nolzer's Marvelous. Did you guys see this like just random dead insect right here? I mean, my gosh. I mean, I know I have like a little bit of nuclear fallout in this basement, but geez, like for real. Sorry about that. Um, so yeah, Dungeon, <laughs> Dungeon Stone. Um, this is an army painter uh, paint. Came in the Nolzer's Marvelous. Um, pigments box uh, which is pretty neat I'm running low on this guy but dungeon stone is what I'm going to be base coating this uh, this stone golem with all right so I'm gonna just have my little little setup right here see it's it's a horrible video already I mean it's a, it's actually terrible so whatever it's fine give your your paint a nice shake and um, you know I don't like to apply too much to the palette. Uh, one mistake that I made when I was, uh, when I first started out uh, painting um, was, oh, kicking things. I mean, like, this is why I need like producers and stuff, but this is my first video. Guaranteed to fail, and it's already failing, so what are you gonna do? Um, all right, so I have my Dungeon Stone paint in the palette, and I was saying one of the biggest mistakes I made when I was a new painter um, was using too much too soon um, and one of the important things that I that I learned was you know you can always add more paint you can't take paint away and with the paints coming in um, you know amounts as small as that you don't want to use too much if you don't have to so you might have noticed I dropped a little dribble of water on my paint and that was just to dilute it. Um, what happens is if you apply the paint right out of the bottle, um, a lot of times it'll go on too thick and you can actually distort some details on your model, which you don't want to do. Uh, I'm using a number two brush for this. Since it's all one color, I probably could have used a larger brush, um, but you know, if you're painting standard sized miniatures, um, and the stone golem is a little bit larger than a standard sized mini. Um, you're normally going to be base coating with a number two size brush, even if you don't know it. So, you know, as you can see, I did not prime this figure. And the reason why I didn't prime him is because he came, he came, he came. By the way, I have an, a degree in English. I have an English degree. Um, and I just said he came. So... He came pre-primed and all of the WizKids miniatures um, uh, in the D&D lines, they will actually come pre-primed. Um, this brush is actually not my favorite. 
Um, I busted it out specifically for this tutorial and it sucks. So I'm not a fan of it. I would normally change it right away, but as I said, you know, I'm not worried about it. I'm painting a figure that's all with one, that's all one color. Um, so I'm not too, too worried about it. But if I was, if I was concerned about, you know, getting a, a, a face and a beard, um, you know, delineated, then yes, I would absolutely change brushes because this is like, you know, it's like if somebody broke both of your arms and then you tried to go and play like Ultimate Frisbee or something, that's what it feels like painting with this brush. Um, Ultimate Frisbee. Uh, I don't know why I went with Ultimate Frisbee. Could be the first video jitters. I don't know. So anyway, let's talk about base coating. Base coating is my least favorite step as I kick my camera again. Um, <laughs> base coating is my least favorite step of this process, and it's my least favorite step for a couple of reasons. Um, it takes a while, and... To me, it's just it's just kind of uninteresting. Really, all you're doing is you're all, all you're doing is applying the color that you want to the areas that you want it. Um, which you know sounds like you know well, duh. Why isn't that what painting is? I mean, yeah, it is. But you know, the detailing stage, the highlighting stage, is probably my favorite because that's when you really see your um, figure kind of coming to life. Um, and I'm also going to throw this out there. I am not like a seasoned painter by any means. I would say I'm a passable painter. Um, I'm definitely better than I was, um, but I definitely have room for improvement. So if you're watching this and you see any of my techniques and you're kind of like, why don't you try it this way? Cause it'll be easier. I'm all for that. Cause I'm not about to sit here and just be like, I'm the end all be all because I am far from it. Um, I get inspired by other creators out there. Um, you know, a lot of people who I follow on Instagram and, and post amazing projects. Um, you know, people who have YouTube videos that I subscribe to, um, you know, I'm always trying to stay inspired and learn techniques that'll help me uh, up my game. So, yes, this is the Stone Golem, a WizKids model, Nolzer's Marvelous Miniatures. And another reason why base coating is probably my least favorite of the steps is because it takes a while and I am definitely regretting not um, using a larger brush for this but I definitely wanted to show you guys the number two brush because I do mention um, number two brushes in my um, in my blog posts actually going to dilute this just a little bit more here. So having an eyedropper with water in it is pretty clutch, um, especially, you know, to make sure your paints are nice and delineated, delineated, nice and diluted, um, or thinned, I should say, not diluted. You don't, you don't want them to be too diluted, but you do want them relatively thin. And I mentioned before, it could, it'll help you not to distort any details on these models because it's like with every wave, like the details just get more and more intense. And as you can see, I'm like all over the place painting this thing here. I'm on an arm, then I'm on an ankle. It's just ridiculous. And I'm not normally like that, but because this, like I said, this guy's got one color. So um, yeah, this brush is actually terrible. Like legitimately terrible, a terrible brush. If I had to rate this brush, scale of 1 to 10, 3.2. We'll go 3.2. Awful brush. But again, it's doing the trick. And you'll see, you see I'm spinning this model every 
which way. Now I am using um, a model holder and they make these four models um, about this size. Um, this one's from Citadel, but you can, I think there's other brands out there that you can find. It's about 20 bucks. Um, I was all gung-ho when I first started um, buying painting materials and and all that so you know I just kind of threw everything in the cart and paid for it but um, you know there's people out there that use like poster tack and stick a mini on top of a water bottle and it achieves the same effect for a lot cheaper so um, you know you could also you could also do that just something that you can use to manipulate the figure without having your hand actually on the miniature. Just helps you keep your hands free of paint. Um, and it'll allow you to get certain angles a little bit easier. So I went back to the water because I um, was afraid that my paint was too thick. Now I'm afraid that my paint is too thin. So I'm going to wait for it to dry and then go back and see if I have to apply any more. Any more paint to this guy. So, yep, step one, base coating. The definition of base coating... Um, is like I said just putting the basic colors in here that you want where you want them that's that's all base coating is um, always the first step and that's if your miniature is in, is that's if your miniature is primed and ready to paint out of the box um, if your miniature is not primed and ready to paint out of the box and your first step would be to prime it of course because if you don't prime it um you know an unprimed miniature can just lead to a lot of aesthetic problems um you know paint won't hold as well um and things of that sort so just applying some more paint to the palette here If you're still watching, I am amazed. You're like, all right, so we're just putting gray paint on this guy. And essentially, yes, that's what we're doing. Base coating him in gray. Boring. So I'll tell you a little bit about myself while I'm doing this. Um, I'm a school teacher. I teach fourth grade. Obviously, this year was absolutely bananas with COVID, um, and this actually um, is how I kind of got back into painting. I, I I started miniature painting a couple years ago in um, 2018, um, and I went pretty crazy with it. Um, I was not good. Um, I did not get better as I went. I just kind of, you know, I just kind of did my three basic steps and how it looked was how it looked and that was it. And then um, while I was, you know, pretty much working from home and I'm, you know, home all the time. You don't have the commute back and forth. You know, when your day is done, you're done and you're home. I would take, um, you know, some of the miniature figures that I um, abandoned a couple of years ago and just started painting them. But this time with a more um, kind of a keen eye and, a, and more of a desire in, you know, making this a craft that I um, am very passionate about. So... Um, and it, and, you know, it kind of, you know, kind of reinvigorated me in the world of, uh, miniature painting. So here I am again. And I stopped mini painting because, um, I got married 
that summer in 2018, uh, we went on our honeymoon to Hawaii for two weeks. And by the time I got back, you know, it was time for work and, you know, a new house, new dog, uh, new obligations. I just couldn't really keep up with it. So, um, but now, uh, I think I'm too far down the rabbit hole to climb back out again. At that point, I was just kind of teetering on the uh, on the edge of the proverbial rabbit hole there. I'm also a freelance writer. I've written three books that I've published, um, but also, and I am going to go back up on this arm because this arm is a little bit thin. Um, and I have a fourth one that is finished that I'm in the process of formatting for publishing. So always doing something with my right brain. I'm completely off camera. Clearly I'm not doing anything photographically with my right brain. Or is it the left brain? I don't know. Whichever side creativity is on. Um, so that's the stone golem right there. I'm going to leave the base that he's standing on until the end. But essentially the reason I'm showing you this is base coating step number one. You just take your paint, the paint color that you want. You normally will go, you know, on the not quite as... You want to start somewhere in the middle. You, you like, it, For example, if I want this finish to be like a lighter gray... Then I'll start with a mid-tone gray because the washes are going to darken it down and that'll be the next step. And then the final step, the highlighting, um, which I'll show you, dry brushing, um, that's going to bring that color back to uh, back to life a little bit. So you want to use kind of like a mid-tone for your base, which I have done here and uh, wasted about 20 minutes of your time. So if you stuck with me the whole way through, thank you. I promise you the videos will get better. And so does Stone Gollum. So Stone Gollum says thank you as well for watching him uh, awkwardly get dungeon stone lathered all over his body. And we'll see you for part two, which is going to be the wash phase.